Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and today we're going to finish up with uh, the incoming lines that come into telephone systems from the phone company. Uh, let's start. You know, most people ask, well, how many lines should I have from the phone company? Well, I got a rule of thumb, okay? If you're a normal business, you don't really take a lot of calls, but you know, um, you got a lot of secretarial staff or you got a lot of people, you know, sitting in front of the computers and they need to call out. Well, it's usually a 30% trunking that's what that's called. And what that means is if you have 10 phones, well then you should have three lines. 30% trunking. That's what 30% trunking means. However, if you're uh, someone who depends a lot on your telephones and you got a lot of telephone access, maybe you're up to 50 or 60% uh, trunking. And if you're a call center, well you're talking about 95 plus in your trunking. But normal businesses, 30 to 60%. Once you get above 60%, you're really using your phones a lot. And you can tell just by watching um, how your people answer phones. Are they on the phone for a long time? Is there a lot of phone ringing going on? Uh, you know, do you have a lot of movement with uh, outside lines? Or are you a company that spends a lot of time on the internet just you know, looking at websites, typing in, uh, filling out forms, things like that? So that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. But normally when you're talking about a uh, uh, property managers or uh, a law firm or that type of office work, well then you're talking about anywhere from 30 to 60 percent, probably around 30 percent in most cases. Uh, now if you're basically a warehouse, well, you know, really, do you need more than uh, 30 percent? You're probably going to get away with less than that. Uh, a good way to figure this out is you go with 30 or 60 percent, whatever you think's best, and then just watch your lines. Are all your lines filling up? and people complaining that they can't get through to your telephone system because they're getting busies, well, that would mean that all your lines are filled up. Now, if they call your phone system and they're getting voicemail from your phone system, that just means your people aren't answering the phones. You gotta get them to answer the phones. I thought this was really interesting. A couple of years back, oh, probably more than 10 years ago, um, a person asked me to sell them a phone system and I sold them the phone system and I was there to make sure that it was working fine and everything else and sure enough it was. But one of the things he requested was he wanted a human voice to answer every single call and only voicemail at night. And I thought okay that's fine. So we programmed it that way and the phone started ringing after we hooked up the, the new phone system and everything else. But the employees weren't picking up the phone. They were just sitting there talking to each other and he came to me very angrily and he said, this phone system is broken, all it does is ring. Well, you know something? There's some things a phone system can't do. Can't pick up lines and answer if the voicemail is not on. But even if the voicemail is on and your employees aren't answering the phone, what's going to happen is your voicemail box are going to fill up and I've seen that happen too. But I think that the, the craziest thing I ever saw, um, I used to work for a big uh, uh, IT department in a big corporation and they sent me to uh, New York City uh, to, to check out a new phone system because they were having problems. And what they were saying was that people call through and they never get an answer. And so I stood way off in the distance and watched our operator uh, answer phone calls. And I saw that the phone started ringing and everything else. And as she was going through her pocketbook, looking at things near the phone, kept on ringing. Then she dropped something. And then while well, she went down on the ground to pick something up, line two started ringing. And as she's going around, and it was line three started ringing. And all of a sudden, line one stopped ringing because per a person hung up. And then she sat back up. And she had that thing for whatever it was, a hairbrush or, or something that was in her pocketbook. And finally, when she was all ready to answer the third line, it stopped ringing. And I realized what the problem was. It wasn't equipment. It was poor training of employees. And that might be something you need to look at on your system also. How are your employees trained to answer telephones? Uh, remember, if you got voicemail, your voicemail, your auto attendant on your voicemail has already answered the phone for you. So it's already said, thank you for calling XYZ company please enter the extension of a person you desire or dial zero for operator. So if you're answering the phone at that point, you don't want to say, hi, this is XYZ company. No, you've already been introduced. The person already knows what uh, company they've called. They've heard that confirmation in the auto attendant. So you just need to answer, hi, this is Jim or Bill or whatever your name is. Um, you don't want to say Jim if your name isn't Jim. 
But, you know, hello, this is uh, Bob, Sue, whatever it is, and you go on with the conversation from there. So we've talked about trunking, what that means, because a trunk line is any line that goes from the phone uh, company to the phone system. So it's called trunking. So when you hear a 30% trunking or a 50% or a 60% trunking, that's what it's in reference to, the percentage of that phone system that is dedicated just to the phone company, incoming lines, outgoing lines, just dedicated to the phone company. Okay, well, let's talk about the individual lines coming from the phone company. You've got a couple different types of lines. Uh, first, you have a thing called a CO line, central office. Remember, we talked about that in the first video. Central office is a name for the phone company. Um, and that's where they deliver the dial tone uh, to, the, uh, to the building you're in. So that's called a CO line. So first let's talk about basic CO line, sometimes known as POTS, plain old telephone system, uh, or service, excuse me, plain old telephone service. And they're analog lines, and you can order one at a time or two at a time or, or build them up, have eight or seven or, or multiples of whatever you would like. And they're analog lines. They come into the phone system. The phone system from there, once it's programmed properly, uh, will distribute the lines according to the way you'd like them. Um, however, um, they're also, the per circuit, are usually the most expensive. So your next step up is going to be your T1 lines. Now, T1 lines have 24 circuits on them, and usually the price break is usually in most areas, your area might be different, is around 15 lines. So once you, you get close to 15 lines, eh, it's just cheaper to have a T1. But there's a new technology out, or actually it's not new anymore, but a different technology out that's newer than T1s uh, that's called PRI, Primary Rate Interface. And that's 23 lines with one of the circuits being a data circuit. So it's 23 plus one. And what that means is 23 voice circuits plus one data circuit. Why would you need a data circuit? What's really nice about a PRI um, is that it gives you information like caller ID. Um, it gives you a lot of information, uh, what number they dialed to get to you. There's a lot of things that you can get from that, that last circuit. So in my opinion, a PRI is much better than a T1, but they are similar in makeup. But the, the newer way and the best way to go is a primary rate interface. And uh, the next thing, which is pretty new at, at, the, at the filming of this video, and that's called um, a SIP trunk. And a SIP trunk uses voice over internet protocol. So it uses VoIP to go from your office to the phone company office. And um, usually, though, you buy these trunks off of a special company called Internet Telephony Service Provider, ITSP. And uh, this is fairly new, um, but what it does is it, it takes your phone call and it uses internet protocol all the way to the phone company. Then from there, the phone company drops off and gives you dial tone. Let me show you on the board. So let's say this is your, uh, your phone system and you have your telephones here connected to your phone system. And uh, you connect up to internet telephony service provider out there. This uses VoIP, voice over internet protocol. So you're using your internet protocol to get to your internet services, uh, internet telephony service provider. So you're getting your internet, you're also getting your voice lines and everything else through this service provider. And then what they do is when you dial out from that service provider, you're going to your plain old telephone service, you know, T1s, your PRIs, T3, whatever else that's necessary out there. But also if other companies are attached, to this system, then you can go directly using uh, VoIP to the other uh, companies without even going out over the regular traditional telephone lines. So I've given you a little bit of background there. One other things, another thing I want to talk to you about is when you're thinking about a move, some of these services from the phone company will take some in some situations longer than a month to order. 
So if you're thinking of a move six months from now, you got to find out, does that service provider have those circuits in your area? That's first of all. And if they do, then let them know at least, at least six weeks ahead of your move, what you're planning to do. Now, also, if you're planning to keep your telephone numbers that you're presently using, then make sure that they can transfer those numbers to the new circuits. Again, this is Jim Gibson from CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.